Hi again. Here we are, still working on the shopping cart. And I know it's been a few videos. They're all short, though, you know, and we haven't even done the shopping cart yet. But uh, we need to cover all that ground so we can, you know, understand the features and the, you know, the techniques and the, you know, functions and all those little bits of JavaScript, you know, to build the shopping cart, right? So let's start the cart now in, in earnest. Okay, so there's going to be like one more thing that we need to cover though, okay? So here's what we did last week, or I mean on, you know, on the last video, right? And, uh, and you know, this is just a function where we can pass it, you know, two values here, you know, two arguments or parameter variables, and then the function prints the message out, you know, using the you know, this message and it prints it this number of times, right? So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do one more thing with with functions, okay? And I'm going to delete this and start all over again here, and I'm going to write a brand new function here, okay? I'm going to call this, um, how about let's call this, um, uh, let's call it my function again, right? Okay? And one other thing that we need to know about functions and variables is, is the, the idea of scope, okay? Let's put a little note up here, scope. Okay, so what is scope? Um, scope determines where a variable or a value is visible, okay? Um, and since a value can be anything, like, in, and the variable... The idea of a variable is really just a name that's holding a value. So var variable and value are kind of the same thing, right? A variable and also identifier is really just, you know, the term used for the name that you give to a variable, right? And since functions can be assigned to variables, functions themselves are values, right? So this idea of scope applies to everything, really. It applies to functions, it applies to, you know, variable values, strings and numbers and things like that, objects and arrays, right? And so uh, so what is what is scope exactly, right? Well, scope determines where you can see a value within your program, okay? So this, um, this script tag right here is sort of the global scope. So if I create a variable here, and I'll call it... Um, global, oops, I'll do my best to spell it right, you know, this variable is available in, you know, the whole scope of JavaScript, okay, so if I define this variable with the value hello here, then, you know, anywhere else in my, in my page, anywhere I have a script tag, if I have another script tag down here, you know, with some other JavaScript in it, you know, I can say console dot uh, log, oops, wait, I got to put an E on there, right? You know, and I can say console log global, right? And then we'll, we'll put global here, right? And so, you know, I have two separate script tags, but this, this variable called global here is kind of spanning both of those script tags, right? Let's give it a try here, right? Uh, let's test that in our in our window here, and you can see it says global hello, right? So, you know, I mean, that doesn't sound like much, but really, like that's kind of interesting. You know, if we put a if we create a script and we declare a variable in one script, and then we call on that variable inside another script tag, the variable still exists, right? Okay, now this also applies to scripts that are in other files. So if we imported a script from somewhere else, right, then the same thing would be true. Okay, and this is one of the um, sort of the problems or pitfalls of, of JavaScript is that, you know, you might be importing scripts from somewhere else that maybe you didn't write or you wrote a while ago and you can't remember everything in there. And if the variables are, are in this global scope, right, then the rest of your program can see them, and if you use the same name variable somewhere else, then you can have a problem, right? So imagine, like, you know, I've, I've declared 
global hello here, right? But in this script down here, I say, you know, global equals 10 because it's a number that I'm using for some other purpose, right? And I just forgot that I'm using the global name, right? You know, but sometimes I want global hello and sometimes I want, you know, global to be 10, right? You can see we have sort of a, a confusion there, right? And if I, you know, refresh this, you see I get 10 this time because we are, are calling console log after we change the value of global to 10, right? But really, you know, if I'm just looking at this script here, I'm thinking like global should just be 10. But if I'm looking at this script, you know, global should be hello. If this function called my function, you know, was called at a later date and it wanted to say, you know, global, you know, or, you know, lo it wanted to log global here, and it was called maybe from down here for some reason, right? You know, um, you know, we can see that it says 10, but, you know, actually, you know, I'm looking at the script here and I'm thinking it should have said hello, right? So, so this is the idea of scope. When you declare a variable, it's where that variable is visible. This variable has a global scope. It is visible throughout the entire program, okay? And that's, like I said, that can be a big problem. And you'll, you'll, you know, if you're not quite getting my, my description of the problem here, you'll, you know, the more JavaScript you learn, the more you'll see that, that this can be a problem. Every once in a while, it's kind of helpful because you can just declare something and just use it anywhere. Um, you generally, they, people, I think if you're, you know, super programmer guy, you kind of consider that bad practice, but, uh, you know, every once in a while that can do you a favor. Um, anyway, so what else about scope? Let's try this one. What if I move this variable, global hello, what if I move it and I put it inside this function? Okay. So what's happening here? Let's go back to scope here, right? Okay, what's happening here is that I've changed the scope of this global variable. Okay, let's, you know, you know, let's imagine this for a minute. This variable is inside a code block, right? So it begins here and it ends here. And when a variable is declared with the keyword var inside of a code block, that determines the scope for that variable. So if the variable is not inside a code block, then the code block is the entire program. Okay, but if it's inside the curly braces, right, then the scope is those curly braces. Okay, let's do a little experiment. I'm going to take this out from down here for a moment, right? And let's imagine that we wanted to console log global right here. like that, right? So I'll, I'll save it, and then I will refresh it here. And it says, hmm, uncaught reference error, global is not defined. Whoa, right? Well, well we, we defined global here, and we haven't called on the function, so that kind of makes sense, right? Let's try calling on our function. Well, what if I call on the function like this, right? So we'll call on the function, Global will be defined inside that function. It'll be printed to the console, and then we'll try and print it to the console a second time. Let's watch what happens. Oh, so the first time it gets printed with a value hello, but the second time it still comes up undefined, right? Or not defined, right? So let's let's take a look at that, right? So what's happening here? Well. Inside the code block here, since we've declared global with the keyword var, that sets the scope of global to this code block. And so global cannot exist or does not exist, th or this version of global, I should say, does not exist outside of this code block. Okay? Um, this global down here has nothing to do with, uh, with the one up here, right? They're totally separate. Okay, 
and if I, um, you know, if I were to define global up here like this, you know, as 10, right? Let's watch what happens here, right? So I've got, I've got a global variable outside of the scope of this function. So this global is the scope of the entire program. This global is the scope of, you know, the function here. Right, so what's gonna happen? We're gonna call in the function, we're gonna set global here, right? Is it gonna change this one? Or, and when we see global here, which one is the computer gonna use? Is it gonna use this or is it gonna use that one, right? Let's take a look. And then when we get down to here, what's global gonna be, right? Try and predict those things for yourself and then test it, right? You can even stop the video and then start it again. I'm just gonna go straight to the answer, right? Oh. So the first time global is used, we get, let's actually, maybe we can move this over like this, right? So the first time we get, when we call on my function, global is set to 10, but here we set global to hello. So what really happened here is we have two globals, one in the local, in the, the global scope, and one in the local scope of this function. And when there are two variables with the same name, then the one that's, you know, uh, I don't know, more local, I should say, or local to the current function is the only one the computer can see. So this global is effectively not available inside this function because it has the same name as, as this one, okay? And so in here, we print the value of this global outside this one is not available because its scope can't extend outside of this code block. So we see the other one. And then we get, you know, global 10 down here. Okay? So there's scope. There's kind of an introduction to scope, right? And we're going to use this when we create our, um, you know, this will come into play when we create our, um, our shopping cart, right? So maybe I'll just stop the video here and then we'll really get started on the shopping cart in the next video. Okay. Thanks for watching.